There are so many people in life that feel that they can outsmart and outrun the devil. You cannot outrun the devil when it's time for him to collect upon the agreement that you made with the devil. There are so many people that make deals with the devil. And when the devil catches you slipping and he comes to collect, now you want to run to the church or if you were brought up in the church, you want to run back to the church in safety, thinking that you're going to escape, thinking that God is going to save you from the deal that you made with the devil. Like Whitney Houston and a few other celebrities that made deals with the devil came up in the church. Whitney Houston came up in the church singing in the choir. She made a deal with the devil. She got caught up into drugs. She became what she referred to as bisexual, having an affair with a woman, lesbianism, and then when the devil was about to collect, she tried to run back to the church, start singing in the choir. But the devil said, no, 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 no. We had an agreement. And not only are you forced to uphold that agreement, but God is going to hold you accountable for making a deal with the devil. God would even allow you and force you to uphold the agreement that you made with the devil. See, God is not what many people think he is. You just feel you can do any and any everything that you want to do, and then you can just run back to God, and he's going to save you from the choices that you made in life. The Bible says that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if you sow corruption, it's guaranteed that you're going to reap corruption. And most people, when they run to God, they're not running to God because their heart loves the Lord. Or their heart is ready to serve the Most High. They're running to God thinking that God is going to save them because of his grace and his mercy. See, they underestimate God's grace and mercy. God's grace and mercy is not for everyone. You reap what you sow. So when you make that agreement with the devil, keep that same energy. When the devil catches you slipping and comes back to collect. I want to read a scripture taken from the book of John, the 10th chapter, reading the 10th verse. And it reads as follows. The thief, meaning the devil, cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm going to read that 10th verse again. The thief cometh not but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. I am come, meaning Christ, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. See, that's the purpose of the devil. The devil is not your friend. Yes, he may give you wealth and fame and you make an agreement with him and uh, you're able to do your drugs and illicit sex, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism. Yes, you can enjoy those things here in this life. See, what people fail to realize that this is Satan's domain. This is the devil's playground. So when you enjoy the riches of Satan, the good life of Satan, 
because of a deal, an agreement you made with him. Either knowingly or unknowingly. The devil will one day collect. And that's why I always say you play on the devil's playground. One day the devil will come to collect. So when the devil catches you slipping. See because he knows that right. That he knows exactly when you're going to go, go back on the word or agreement that you made with him. See you sign these agreements. You sign these. These, these deals or these contracts, knowing what you're getting into, but not expecting the unexpected. You can almost sense when the devil is about to collect. So you call yourself running back to the church, not just Whitney Houston. See, because Whitney Houston ran back to the church. And God will honor the deal that you made with the devil. So although you run back to the church, you get in the choir, thinking that's your safe haven, but the devil says, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh, we have an agreement, and God is not going to protect you. I'm going to repeat that. God does not protect you. See, the Bible says, with their mouth, they do honor him, but their heart is far from him. See, the Bible says you're like whitewashed tombs. Outside, like polished tomb, but inside is full of dead men's bones. See, you are rotten to the core on the inside. So you run to the church to give the impression that you are righteous, that you are holy, that you trust in the God of this, of the universe, the most high God, not realizing that you gave your allegiance to the devil, the devil or Satan or Lucifer is your God. Your God is the God of this natural world. So I'm going to read another scripture to you. First Peter 5 and 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, see, you think the devil's your friend, but he's not. The Bible says he is your adversary. Yes, you may be doing his bid, you're doing his will, but he is your adversary. Because once this life is over and you're judged, then you make your bed in hell. It's tight, but it's right. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. If you notice, lately, people have been dropping like flies, especially celebrities. People have been dropping like flies because like I mentioned, death will slow walk you. See, at the beginning of the year, death is given a list. And he will slow walk you. And right when you think you got away, he comes at a time that you least expect. Especially when you try to run from your destiny. See, the destiny of many of y'all is hellfire. Because you enjoyed the riches of this life. See, you might have made a deal with the devil on YouTube. With many subscribers. They're constantly adding cash to your cash app and your PayPal. And you're making money, you become a millionaire. And then when it's time to collect, you try to run to the church. You try to run to Islam. You try to become righteous. But the devil says, uh-uh-uh, you're not going nowhere. You enjoyed this life. I gave you wealth. I gave you riches. I gave you fame. 
I allowed you to be an Instagram model, which they're not really models. They're prostitutes online. So I allow you to be an Instagram model. And I had celebrities coming at you, throwing cash at you. I allowed you to marry a celebrity. You had his children. And then you divorced him a few years later, and I gave you millions. And now you want to turn your back on me? Now you want to turn to the creator? Uh-uh-uh, we made a deal. So keep that same energy. Now I'm going to show you a scripture in the book of Revelation where even God is telling you to keep that energy. See, Many of y'all want to live the way you want to live and then you think you're going to heaven anyhow just because you say that you believe. The Bible says that demons believe, but yet they tremble. The Bible also says that many in that day will say, Lord, have I not? And he will say, depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. Have your part. In the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. That part is your reward. For how you lived your life. In this world. Your reward is not repenting. And reward is not always a good thing. See. A reward is not always a good thing. Your reward. Is according to how you lived. On this earth. I'm going to read Revelation 22 from the 11th to the 17th verse, and it reads as follows. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. In other words, keep that energy. If you are unjust, keep that energy when the death angel catches up to you. When you find yourself laying on your sick bed, which will turn into your deathbed, keep that same energy you had when you turned your back on the Most High. So it says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. In other words, keep that same energy. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. The 12th verse says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. The 13th verse says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, not those that like to just quote scriptures and make it appear they know the word of God. Guess what? Satan knows the word of God. Remember when Jesus was being tempted and the devil came to him, when the tempter came, he said, did not God say that he shall give his angels charge concerning thee? To bear ye up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. The devil started quoting scriptures to the word himself. Satan brought the word of God back to Yeshua or Jesus. So the devil knows the word too. So you have to do his commandments rather than just speak his commandments. You sound good on the internet, on YouTube, but how do you live your life? So the 14th verse says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. The, 16th, the 15th verse says, And without our dogs, in other words, outside, of the city are dogs. Those are the ones that need to keep that energy of being unjust, filthy, 
ungodly, unrighteous, lesbians, homosexuals, LGBTQ community, murderers, thugs, gangbangers, drug dealers. Keep that energy. It says, for without our dogs and sorcerers, those that are witches and warlocks, soothsayers, tower card readers, all of those wicked people online that want to predict the future, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The 16th verse says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The 17th verse says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Now that whosoever, don't get caught up in that. Because you may not be a part of that whosoever. Whosoever of the righteous, let him take the water of life freely. So keep that same energy when the death angel comes or when Satan comes to collect on the agreement you made with him. See, you can't outrun the devil. You can't outrun from the devil. You can't run from the devil. You can't hide from the devil. And this is not giving the devil no type of praise. It's just letting you know that you can't escape your judgment. You can't escape the deal that you made with Satan himself. You enjoy the riches of this life and now you feel you can try to repent and turn to God and everything is okay. No, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. You cannot run from the devil. You play on the devil's playground and one day the devil will show up. So you might as well repent. Don't wait until it's too late. Like I heard a song in the church says, don't let it be said, it's too late. Repent today. And may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, so you can't, you can't escape. You can't escape. You can run all you want. You can hide. You can think, you think you're going to write. And I think, who was that? Another a rapper did that. Chingy did that, ran to the church and became a preacher. And then right when he felt he was safe, he decided to go back into the world. See, his heart wasn't in it. See, he spoke a good game and he gave the image. But yet when it comes down to it, his heart was far from him. And see, when the devil catches you, he catches you slipping right when you think that it can't happen to me. You think you got away with it before and it's going to happen again. Right at that point, that's when the devil says, aha, I got you. I caught you slipping. You can't run from the devil. Keep that same energy you had when you cursed the most high. Keep that same energy when you said or you made that video and said that speaking in tongues is of the devil. And I will be doing a video on that. Keep that same energy. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.